SpotlightMediaStudios.com. Welcome to Education Unfiltered. Here is Mary Stucco. Hello, this is Mary Stucco with Education Unfiltered, where we talk all things higher ed. And today we're going to be joined by Dr. Albert Cohen, where he uh, is going to discuss Michigan State University's approach to actuarial education and how it relates to quantitative risk and sports analytics. Dr. Cohen is the Director of Actuarial Science and also the Graduate Certificate in sports analytics welcome dr cohen how are you doing today great mary nice to hear your voice again very good so how is everything over at michigan state doing really well we had the simon lecture last year which is the first time in person after four years um and in fact the last simon event we had was the 2019 inaugural simon conference for young researchers and risk management and insurance where we had folks from across the country uh young people come and present their research you know stuff that they had done with their faculty um, liaisons, I guess, faculty mentors. And so since 2019, we haven't had an in-person event of this magnitude. And so we're really happy to have this uh, kickoff sort of our actuarial return to campus. It was really a lot of fun. It was great to see you there, by the way. Thank yeah, you, so you know, it was so cool to be a part of that. And, you know, I had not been over to the new STEM building. What is that called over at Michigan State? It's a st- uh, I believe it's a STEM learning building. And that's okay. where they used to have it an incinerator and if you actually walk through the building the next time you come uh, for a cup of coffee i'll show you they've actually they kept the old incinerator and they had a sort of art installation it's really neat well uh, i, I it, went it's through it it almost looked like it was like a van gogh art exhibit inside of it because i did i did poke around and look at it it was really sweet in there i i think it's awesome and, and you know you can see a lot of people just they're studying milling around um there's a great coffee shop in there so yeah it's definitely a great addition to us you know, being a Wells Hall where tradition, a lot of math and stats goes on, it's great to have that building right beside it. Yeah, it kind of made me want to just move my office right over there. So it was awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't think Michigan State will mind. <laughs> no, no, of course, they've got lots of room. So, so tell me a little bit about, you are the Director of Actuarial Science and also the Director of the Graduate Certificate in Sports Analytics. So do you want to give us a little history about that and then... What exactly does that mean? Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So I'd, I'd be delighted to, by the way. So um, back in the early 2000s, there was a specialization in actuarial science that was formed, uh, basically due to student demand. You know, there was a student club, a lot of companies here in the mid-Michigan area, obviously, in the insurance field that were hiring. And so the specialization came up. And in the late 2000s, I was um, here as a postdoc, and then there were sort of feelings brewing that maybe we should make this into a major. And that's what I was brought on to do, is to build the version 1.0 of actuarial science major at MSU. Um, and we're very responsive to industry. You know, one of the big things that we did is we had this course called Math 491B developed, which is essentially teaching kids that are really intelligent and good technically, but how do we get them to work in a group and how do we get them to communicate these technical ideas to a non-technical audience? So Math 491B has sort of been our... our um, our, our North Star, essentially. How do we get students that are out there into the industry that are battle-tested even before they leave Michigan State? Mm-hmm. And so for the last 10 years, that's sort of been our guiding principle, which is meet with our board, um, get feedback, you know, treasure our alumni and our current students at the same time. You know, we want everybody to come back and understand that they're part of the keystone that each generation that leaves here that they, they've set for the, the next generation. So we have a lot of alumni coming back, and we have a very active student club. Um, but then in the mid-2010s, I met a student, an engineering student, um, that turned out to be a hockey player here on campus. And there's a, there's a great story I'll tell you the next time we chat. But essentially, he and I, Trevor Neal and I, started within actuarial science, within this Math 491B uh, course, for students that wanted to apply their technical skills and in insurance to a new way of thinking about sports analytics. Because we could see that that was turning in the industry. It wasn't just money ball, but every sport was interested in this. Um, and so we started to get a lot of actuarial students who were coming out and say, look, you know, I, I do actuarial science, but I'm also really interested in sports analytics. Is there anything I can do? And we'd say, of course, take 491B with us, and we'll give you this experiential undergraduate research uh, course that will take the tools that you've learned already and apply them to just different data sets, because data is data. And if you want to apply it to sports, even better. So recently, we decided that we're also going to take that experiential learning 
couple it with some of the experience that we've had uh, at Michigan State teaching at the graduate level, data science, risk analytics, quantitative risk analytics, and now we've got this new certificate. So I would suggest that what's really unique about Michigan State University's actuarial program is it's actually an incubator for other programs. And I don't think I've seen that before, where we've been given the, the latitude to just, hey, do neat things. You know, hey, teach students how to communicate, teach them how to go and present at a company even before they step foot on a company campus. And on top of that, <laughs> nobody said no when we said, hey, we want to do actuarial approach to sports. I'm like, okay, go ahead, see what, see what happens. And so Michigan State has been very much, I think, in my opinion, reminiscent of where I got my PhD, which is Carnegie Mellon. In Carnegie Mellon, there are no boundaries between um, disciplines. You know, very interdisciplinary. And I'm seeing that here, at least. Nobody said no yet. I hope they don't say, <laughs> they don't say no. You know, an actuarial approach to cooking or something like that. Uh-huh. Maybe that might be too far. But um, <laughs> for now, I, but for now, we've got some, we've got a lot of success. But again, it, it's students first. You know, if you ever watch any of the videos I've been uh, fortunate to be part of, I always mention it. It's students first. I, you know, I have the greatest job on earth because it's also the easiest job on earth because we have fantastic students that make my job easy. They're, mm-hmm. they're very much enthusiastic about what they do, and they carry our mission forward, which is, you know, work with people, you know, communicate your skills well, and make sure to hire the next generation. You know, for me, a big part of what my job is is to encourage folks to hire young people because I think that that's, that's how our society progresses. If, you know, if we make ample room for the next generation, then I think we're in a better shape than if we don't. So I'm, I'm very much a proponent of youth employment, you know, young people employment, hire our students. And so my job is to give them as many job-ready skills as I can before they get to that point. So that, that's sort of a nutshell, in a nutshell, what we, what we do at MSU. So, so tell me, yeah, you do, you do you got a lot of irons in the fire. What yeah. kind of jobs, when people go through your program, what kind of jobs are they looking for, or what kind of jobs are they finding? And do you see any certain trends going in in those areas? That's an excellent question. So um, again, when I was a grad student, my training was in quantitative finance, and so I'm an applied mathematician. That's what my degree's in. Uh, but you know, at that time, the early 2000s, the big field at the time was quantitative finance. So going to Wall Street or other sort of wealth management, these kinds of things, but using mathematics to to find an optimal wealth allocation strategy or price a financial derivative. Um, so you know, actually, it's kind of synthesized that in some of the products that are you know you can find now in the market. I would imagine, but I think the students that that leave here are different than obviously when I was a student. Um, the students that leave here, they're finding jobs from, you know, maybe doing those sort of hybrid finance insurance products, you know, pricing them. Um, they work with underwriters, I would imagine, to, to you know, figure out what, you know, the market demands of them. But I also see them working more and more using tools from predictive analytics. So can you predict human mortality better? You know, can you communicate, by the way, this is going to be the theme of our chat, right? Can mm-hmm. you communicate, you know, why to regulators, why you need to decrease your or increase your reserving or increase your premiums or anything like this. So I think the students that leave here, they're getting jobs working in sort of perhaps entry level sort of, you know, data analysis, you know, for, for insurance products, but mm-hmm. they're also working, you know, as they progress in their career, you know, in the reporting cycle, they're working, you know, I'm sure in the sort of development of new products, probably in conjunction with, um, you know, folks in underwriting. And pretty much whatever the companies demand of them, you know, as they're working with insurance data, whether it's mortality data or property casualty data or anything else related, that'd be sort of a, an overview of what they get jobs in. So either data analysis, working with insurance data, progressing into reporting cycle um, and, and report generation um, tasks and things like that. So for like younger people or people going going back to school, thinking, boy, this sounds really neat. What kind of skill sets should they do or what can they do to prepare for an education at Michigan State or what kind of, of uh, interest should they be holding, do you think, to be successful in this area? The number one tool that I have as a mathematician besides coffee, the number <laughs> one tool I've got is perseverance, that I'm just curious about something and I will not let it go. Like if I'm curious about something and it's technically defined, it makes my life easier to try to figure out a solution. 
I think that folks, you know, young people that come into Michigan State that are curious about mathematics in general, that are curious about, well, I want to design a better strategy for in-game baseball analytics. Are they curious about what are the definitions, what is the vocabulary that folks in baseball use? Are they curious about some of the tools that they can translate those definitions and, and statistics that are being measured into, let's say, a programming language? So are, they interested, are they interested in SQL Server? Are they interested in programming Python or R? Um, and are they also interested and not afraid of looking at mathematics objectively, meaning not just calculus, but would they be interested in writing a proof one day? Would they be interested in writing a pa- reading a paper one day? You know, mm-hmm. for Math191B, essentially, these students have to go out and see what's been done before, which might mean reading a paper, which might mean, you know, going to an advanced talk or, or you know, watching something on YouTube that's at a graduate level and not being afraid to ask questions. So I think the number one thing a student coming into Michigan State should be is perseverant and curious. So are you not scared of what you're going to have to do because you just love it so much? If you have that skill, my money is on you to succeed. Absolutely. Now, obviously, we're an insurance hub here in Lansing area. Um, are yeah. you seeing students kind of flocking to these different insurance companies within the Lansing? Of course, of course, Michigan State's well known throughout the country. You're seeing them going back, you know, out throughout the whole country to find jobs. What are what are you seeing your graduates head towards? That's an excellent, excellent question. So. So the elephant in the room is that Lansing is not Chicago or New York City or Los Angeles or Seattle. I think no. the young people like to go to, right? It's, right. Now, somebody in my age, you know, I love living in East Lansing. You know, I'm originally from Vancouver, Canada, which is also a big city, and I miss the Northwest. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed living here for the last 15 years just because, you know, it's relatively cheap. There's lots of, uh, you mentioned, you know, opportunities or professional opportunities. And so you see a vibrant culture and an art scene developing year over year. Mm-hmm. But yes, I see young people that are not my age, that are younger than me, <laughs> wanting to go to the bigger cities. And yeah. it's, that's just, it's just part of human development, I think, you know. Mm-hmm. So with the pandemic, though, I think you're going to see a lot more remote work happening mm-hmm. or hybrid work happening. And I hope that that develops into a really strong, stronger focus on work-life balance, especially for young people, right? Because on the flip side, when you're entering your career, a lot more is demanded of your time. And you've got the energy to do it. Like in my 40s, Mary, I'm sitting at home, you know, petting my cat, drinking coffee at the end of the day. That's all I can do. I mean, I'm just exhausted. But, <laughs> I hear you. you know, these young people, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? So, yeah. But these young people, they're going out. They want to be part of a, a you know, a vibrant scene. They want to go out to nightclubs. They want to go out to concerts. And I think that that's one of the things that you're going to see, hopefully, you know, smaller towns like the Lansing area develop. You know, I mean, there's, there's this interesting gentleman when I was at Carnegie Mellon. There's a guy named Richard Florida. And he talked about this, you know, the sort of the creative class, you know, where, where do young people go to? What are the cities that they go to? And what are some of the things that attract them? So I've been thinking about that a lot. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy you asked about that because, you know, Lansing is a really great town, I think, to raise a family, or the Lansing area. Mm-hmm. But I think for younger people to attract them, um, I think some folks that are from, from mid-Michigan want to stay here. Um, but I think we're also accepting of the fact that we're going to hopefully be a regional powerhouse continue to be one, which is sending students out to, you know, the Chicago area and Detroit and all these places nearby. And hopefully nationally, too, continue to be a national powerhouse. But, yeah, I think, to answer your question, I think most students have kind of made up their mind when they uh-huh. leave. If you say that they're going to the big city or, you know, go back to where their family is. Um, having said that, I've seen a lot of students that are very interested in staying in Lansing as well. Mm-hmm. But the general trend, I think, is still young people want to go to the bigger cities. Yeah, probably go to the big city and then maybe come back here when they're ready to start their families. You never know. Exactly. Pittsburgh was like that. I should say this one other thing. So Pittsburgh was like that, too. Pittsburgh was interesting to me that, you know, up until recently, you'd only see Pittsburgh Steelers jerseys walking around the town. And I'm seeing lots of other jerseys. And you're seeing that young people are actually moving to Pittsburgh because they've developed a tech scene. Like they've developed a lot of companies. That, you know, the, the big tech companies from out in California have come out to Pittsburgh. I mean, that's because Carnegie Mellon and University of Pittsburgh and so on have developed that sort of hub. And I think Michigan State um, and other schools in Michigan, which I won't name, you know, we're mm-hmm. very good at, at incubating uh, talent and, and companies. And so I hope that we develop a sort of you know, research triangle profile, something like that here, where folks stay in this area and there's more startups happening. Because there are some. There's a great incubator on campus, uh, from what I understand. But yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, it seems like Michigan State's trying to harbor a little bit more of that incubator atmosphere. So, yeah. very good. Yeah, and oh, and go I do want to say one more thing. So, I really appreciate what you're doing at Lansing Community College. And I said this to you when we chatted, but, you know, it's, I've always said it's a rising tide, you know, lifts all boats. And I think what Lansing Community College does and what all our local partners, you know, university uh, colleagues do um, in general is we just make the case for education, that it's not it's for everybody. Education for everybody. You know, growing up as a, as a young man, I'm the son of a tool and die maker, very proud of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but that opportunity is available to me because I also went to two-year college uh, in North Vancouver, British Columbia, a place called Capilano College, which is now Capilano University. And, you know, I still remember my first calculus teacher. I just saw him again this summer, and I saw him again a few years ago. It was the last time I was in Vancouver. And I thank him, right, because he really – didn't scare me off math. You know, he saw that I was trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. I kind of knew, and I teased my dad, I think he kind of knew too, that I was breaking all the tools in the machine shop, so I was probably not <laughs> meant to be a tool and die maker. Mm-hmm. And I, I did like engineering, but because I was at a smaller school, the cost of me not doing engineering after about a semester plus of, of trying it out was not, you know, fatal to my, my wallet. I was able to transition into physics and math. And so I really appreciate that ability. You know, you're able to find students a place just like we can at Michigan State. And, you know, we're all working together. So I just want to say thank you. I mean, I, I benefited from the college system, and I really appreciate what you do, Mary, at Lansing Community College. Just wanted to get that on. Just want to say uh-huh. thank you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It is it is fun helping students find their way, and, and you and I have both seen that happen. So. Well, Liz, thank you so much for joining us today. If anyone needs to reach you, can you tell me how they can go about reaching out to you to ask more questions about your program? Absolutely. So um, my personal email address, I'm, I'm, I'll answer my email you know, usually within an hour if I can, um, is A-C-O-H-E-N at M-S-U dot E-D-U. That's A-C-O-H-E-N at M-S-U dot E-D-U. Um, our new graduate certificate sports analyst, I can just plug that for a second, is uh-huh. now online. The website is available, and I think... Um, it's a little bit longer, so I think you've got that on your website as well, on uh, the podcast side. But yes. our, our graduate certificate sports analytics site is already up. Um, we have a fantastic advisor, a gentleman named Brian Chadwick. So if you're interested in actuarial science, quantitative risk analytics, or a new graduate certificate, Brian Chadwick at uh, C-H-A-D-W-I-C-K, Brian Chadwick at, at uh, the math department. Um, he's available, and his email address is also part of the department, department website. So by email by web we're all available and i'd love to hear from folks i mean i'm here to serve the community full stop so please contact me i will get back to you as soon as i can i promise thank you well that was dr albert cohen michigan state university we appreciate you being here this is mary stucco with education unfiltered have a wonderful day